Power Teacher Pro is the new PowerSchool Gradebook. It has many enhanced features and functions the same way regardless of the device you're using to access it. To enter Power Teacher Pro, you'll either click the Power Teacher Pro link under one of the sections that you teach, or click Power Teacher Pro under the navigation menu. If you need to access a previous year's gradebook, you can still get into Power Teacher Gradebook by using the launch feature at the bottom of the navigation menu. The first time you log into Power Teacher Pro, you'll see the Getting Started screen. We'll go through each of the features of the window, but when you're done with the Power Teacher Pro Getting Started screen, you can click Close. If you ever want to return to that screen, simply click the question mark or help icon and select Getting Started. You'll notice that you can also access the Help menu and Tips and Tricks by clicking on the Help icon. The first thing that you'll want to do to get started is create the categories you'll be using for assignments in each of your classes. To do this, click the Create button and select Category. By clicking on the View All tab, I can see that there are already four district created categories, classwork, project, quiz, and test. The schoolhouse icon indicates this was created at the district level. And I've already created one customized category called daily assignments. To do this, I clicked on the category tab. I entered a name. I have the option of assigning a color to this category. I can choose whether it is active or inactive. And I can also enter a category description. One of the nice features in Power Teacher Gradebook is I can select the specific classes that this category will apply to. So if I only want this category in my personal finance class, I'll check this box here. Or alternatively, I can assign it to all of the other classes that I teach. Then I will click the Save button. I can create as many categories as I would like to. Once I've created a category, if I need to edit it, change it, or perhaps I want to make it inactive because I'm no longer using it, I'm going to go over to the left hand side, click on the grading menu, and select Categories. Here are all of the categories that are currently created in my Power Teacher Pro gradebook. To edit a category, I simply click on the pencil icon and then make the adjustments that I'm interested in making. Notice that I won't be able to edit a district created category, but if I don't intend to use those in my classes, I can always make them inactive and then they will no longer appear in the list of categories. I can also prioritize the categories by changing the order in this menu. This will just be how the categories appear when I'm creating assignments. If I need to reactivate an inactive section, or excuse me, category, I'll just click on Show Inactive, click the Edit button, and make that category active. Once I'm done creating categories, it's time to begin creating assignments. I'll first want to make sure that I'm in the course where I want the assignment to appear, although I will have the opportunity to assign this assignment in multiple courses. Let's say I want to create this in computer applications. Next, I'll go to the Create icon and click Create Assignment. Once I get to the assignment page, here's where I can select which class this assignment will be copied into. When I'm done selecting the courses, I want to make sure I click outside of this window. Don't click the Save button or it will close the Create Assignment window. I'll create the new assignment name. I will select a category. I can assign extra points or extra weights to weight to this assignment. I can change the points that will 
be earned or possible can possibly be earned for this assignment. If you prefer, you can also use a percentage, a letter grade, or choose an assignment that you're only going to mark as collected. If you wanted to keep track of, say, permission slips collected, that might be an example of an assignment you'd create using collected only. You're going to enter a due date similar to uh, the existing Power Teacher Gradebook. You always want to make sure that your due date is within the term that you want to count the assignment. You also can set different due dates for each class or again go back to the single due date. And then again you can type in a description for the assignment. Remember this description is visible to students and parents if they are in the parent portal and they click on the assignment itself, the assignment name, they would be able to see whatever you type here. So just keep that in mind. The student tab allows you to assign this, get this particular assignment to specific students or to remove students. So let's say you had a student who you were modifying their assignments or perhaps they, you knew they were away so you weren't holding them accountable for a specific homework assignment. Simply by unchecking or checking the box will assign the assignment to a specific student. You also have the opportunity to assign standards to a particular assignment. And this is where you can modify whether or not the scores are visible to parents and students. If you are going to count the score in the final grade, you will have to publish at some point, but you can choose on a specific date, days before a due, a number of days before a due date, on the due date, or never. Once I am done with the assignment settings, I'll click Save and it tells me that that assignment was created successfully. Now, I put this in as a homework assignment, and let's say I'm going to have a homework assignment every night, so I want to duplicate this particular assignment, but I'm just going to give it a new date. So all of the settings that I've had are the same, but it's just going to be a new date. And then I click Save, and again, it's been created successfully. When I'm done creating assignments, I can click the Close button. When I want to see those assignments, I can go to the Grading menu and see my assignment list. And these are the assignments that I have in this course. If I need to edit any of my selections, I can click on the pencil icon. When I'm ready to enter grades for the assignment, I'm going to click on the grading icon and select score sheet. Now notice, when I try to click here and enter a grade, this is what replaces the score inspector in the old gradebook, and it's telling me that this assignment is for specific students. So this student, I did not assign the assignment to. I have to go down to the third student in the class in order to enter a grade. Now, I can type a grade in here. I can type a grade in here. I can use any of the uh, icons that were also available in the old gradebook. Um, I clicked on the icons, but you could also type in the two letter code that's underlying to the right. So missing is MI. If I typed in MI, this assignment would come up as missing. I can also use the fill feature to either fill horizontally or vertically. Now one thing that works a little bit different about the fill feature is it will only fill the current score. So if I use the fill feature to fill down, I'm in this 98 score right here, and I click fill down, and it's going to tell me 19 scores have been updated. And then when I look, I'm going to see that the whole class has been assigned a 98. And if I click here, and I want to fill across, 
it's going to fill across the columns and fill in any assignment. Once I am done, I want to click Save so that these scores will be reflected in the gradebook. Notice that once I click Save, the grade for the term is calculated and displayed in the grade column. Now that should be enough to get you started with entering grades for your students in Gradebook. The rest of this video is going to talk about some of the additional features that are available to you. One of the nice things that you can do is monitor the progress of your whole class or an individual student. By clicking on the progress icon and then selecting traditional, you'll see the breakdown of your students and how they're doing this term. You'll also see a breakdown of missing, late, and incomplete assignments, and by clicking on any one of these, it will take you directly back into your score sheet and show you who has missing or late assignments. The other thing that you can do is print reports. I know many people like to print a student roster and use it for attendance or phone logs home. The nice thing about PowerTeacher Pro is you can now customize the name of the report so let's say I wanted to create an attendance sheet to leave for a sub. I'm going to do all of my classes. I am going to do print by section and by student, and I'm going to organize those by last name. And then I can add columns to this report. I'm going to add three blank columns because I know I'm going to be absent for three days. You'll see that I have several student fields that I could add or I could add parent fields if I was going to use this as a phone log home. Then here, I'm gonna have these be the dates that I need attendance taken. I'm going to enter the dates that I want to be those column headers, and then I'm going to run the report. When the report is finished running, it will show up as a PDF, which I can either print or save. And here you can see all of my students, here is my class, and here are those custom date headers uh, that I created at the head at the top of the column. The other thing that you can do if you're a teacher who like to use category weights for your gradebook, you do have the option of changing your traditional grade calculations. However, notice that semester one and computer applications happens to be a semester class as does personal finance. So you can only see the semester but the Y1, S1, and S2 has been set up at the district level. You don't need to do anything here. Notice that you do still have access to the edit icon. That was done so that you may choose what you do in each quarter. If you want to change your grading from total points to category weighting, please only do that in the quarters, not in the S1, Y1, or S2 buckets. To do that, I'd click on the pencil icon. I'd say I'm going to change this to category weighting. And then I'm going to pick the categories that I want to include. So I'm hitting the plus sign. I'm picking the categories, and now because I have three categories, they're each calculating as 33%. If I want one to be weighted more than the other, I can type in a new value, and it will adjust the percentages automatically. If I've decided I don't want to use one of these categories, I just click the minus sign, and it will get rid of it, and then I'm going to hit save. And now my quarter one is set up with category weighting. Now remember that this means only assignments with a category of classwork or quiz will count towards the grade in this class. I happen to be in that personal finance class. So just keep in mind that if you use category weightings, only courses with the categories you've included will be included in that term grade. Again, please don't change anything with the semesters or the year, but you are free to score your quarters any way you would like.
When you're done working in your gradebook, you can return to your Power School window by clicking on the P in the upper left hand corner. If you don't want to remember clicking on the P to get back to this screen to take attendance, you can also open Power Teacher Pro in a new window by right clicking on it and selecting Open Link in New Window or New Tab. And then when you're done, clicking the X will close this window and bring you right back to your PowerSchool attendance page. You can also log out of your gradebook by clicking on your name and choosing Sign Out. I hope this video provided you with the information that you need to get started using PowerTeacher Pro.